here's something I haven't had to do before. When I cross post, something comes out of auction on eBay. So I put it up for auction first on eBay. Then if it doesn't sell, I relist it as buy it now and do a add, create a price and then also do a best offer for that one. So I, people can still kind of barter with me. But then I cross post it to Mercari and then I also cross post it to Facebook Marketplace. Usually what you do on Facebook Marketplace is people message you, you set up a time to meet locally, and that's all fine and dandy, but it, it definitely is a longer process. Well, then they offered shipping, and you could set things up and set a price for shipping and what it is, and people can buy it directly in the Facebook Marketplace post, but Facebook doesn't tell you yesterday, it was either yesterday or the day before, I sold that Elvis puzzle that I had from where he's in the lay and in his jumpsuit and stuff. And we sold that on a different platform and I neglected to, so this is actually all on me, but I neglected to take it off of Facebook Marketplace. But normally someone would message me and I'd go, oh crap, no, that's actually sold and you tell sold them. You sold it twice, did you? I sold it twice. Great. So, but it's because somebody ordered it and I saw this morning there was a, I was going through my Facebook feed and it was showing me you have, it, it treats it like it's a message that you got through Facebook Messenger. And there was a one that said you have an unread message from Elvis Puzzle. And I'm like, oh great, it's still listed. So I went and looked and sure enough, somebody bought it and they had ordered it and it was marked as ready to ship. So I got to learn something. Let's look at it as positive. I got to learn something in how do I do a refund or tell somebody that uh, this has already been sold. Oh. Yeah, so there's the thing where basically you have a button where you can cancel the order. So I did, I pushed cancel order and it just says, did this sell somewhere else? And I said, yes. And you know, it asked if you sold it locally and it said, okay, we'll refund the money and tell the person. But I still felt bad, so I was able to, the person who bought it, there's a message button right next to him. So I sent him a message and said, super sorry, forgot to take this off. It actually sold yesterday. So hopefully he saw this. And th the reason I sent that is because much like me not getting a notification when someone orders one, I don't want it to be the order was canceled. And then a month from now, he's going to be like, where's my puzzle? So that's why I also sent him a message. Plus I felt bad that he wanted to buy it and it wasn't there. So that's how that process went. So that was fun. But we also sold a few other things today, so let's look at what those are. From the very final estate sale we went to before before everything got shut down was uh, this set of pins, which I feel like we got a deal on because the estate sale wasn't doing well. But it's a set of pins where it's got Mr. Magoo and a Schlitz pin. I almost feel like we should have separated these, but they also just kind of feel like they go together. And there's a little, like, bug pins, which are weird. Like, it almost looks like sometimes when you open these old boxes, you find bugs in them. These are actually pins, not bugs. I think they bought it for that. That is pretty neat. Be curious to yeah, see what they're going to wear it as or if they're just going to display it. I was curious why Stu didn't ask us why, if he should post them together. He might have. They're, they're really neat, but at the same time, pins confuse me, so. And then the next item that we sold is, it's actually a very vintagey old thing. Ah, there it is. This snap crack it's crackle from snap crackle pop as a hand puppet it was in a box full of snap crackle pop stuff i got which this was one of them right there which is a more it's an ornament from like the 90s so that's a little more modern this one's clearly super old because it's tainted and who makes hand puppets like this anymore so that's pretty cool and i believe it also came with this Snap, crackle, pop, 70s or 80s wallet. Yeah, no, is this from 64? 84. So that's a 84 wallet. 
So that's from a lot of, I think I got that at an online auction. I thought that was pretty cool. I wonder if I can, I haven't even used it yet. Hey, look at me. <laughs> nice. I'm like, I'm like a 1950s TV show. Hi kids, eat your cereal. <laughs> So that's going out today too. So those are two of the items uh, that we sold. So another thing I had mentioned yesterday was that I was gonna try and do an animated video from one of the, I wanna do a thing where I can chop up the podcast that I have into segments, just so like the subject we talk about, if someone's searching for like, how do I do this or just different sort of things on YouTube, I have probably that conversation happening in one of the podcasts that I have. So I'd like to take a segment where they don't have to go through the whole podcast to try and find it. Uh, and maybe it'll lead them into other podcasts or they'll want to listen to the whole episode with the person that I spoke with. I just think it's kind of a way for people to get introduced to an artist that normally they wouldn't know by name. And I don't necessarily want to do just one of those regular text vid videos where it's just captions showing it on a picture. Uh, I did that last year and I just felt like it was all right, but I wanted to do something more fun and I wanted to try and animate something. So uh, messing around with Blender, which is a 3D animation software program, but they recently created a 2D animation software thing in it and I've been messing with that. And to learn it, I figured what better way than to try and make my own text videos if anyone does want to get into comics, man, there are so many good places to start these days, though. And I would always want to turn people towards trying. I know a lot of people will see these huge like undertakings of, of comics, but there's a lot of one-offs that are just wonderful. Comics that got me into it, and they're just one-offs, The Pro which is a hilarious, hilarious comic book about mm -hmm. a prostitute who becomes a superhero. And it's just a single, single trade. And it's so good. And then you've got We Three. We Three is about like three house pets that got lost or something. And then the government took them to their testing facilities and like fixated like robot bodies on these like just normalized house pets. And so they just gave these house pets these like killing machines. Um, and it sounds funny. Like you want to kind of laugh because you're like, oh, this is going to be goofy. No, it is serious as a heart attack. This is a dramatic. <laughs> the prostitute that becomes the superhero is the funny one. Oh, that's the funny one. For <laughs> and then sure. this one is the serious one about the. This one's very serious. <laughs> wow. and, All right. um, and then Pride of Baghdad. That was another one off that just the artwork is just stunning it's based off of a true story of a bomb that fell in baghdad during the war and it exploded by the zoo and obviously a lot of the animals died but a lot of them were set free in baghdad including a pride of lions and this kind of side story follows these lions as they're kind of walking through a war zone and just discovering this whole new world that they never knew existed outside the walls of this zoo. These are great single one-off comics that people can pick up and read in a day and just feel good that they love it, that it's gorgeous, and that they've helped the industry a little bit. And it's easy to get into because you don't have to remember all of these crazy facts and, and all these characters. It's just these single stories. So it does that sort of stuff and... You know, it looks like a normal, I would just draw it with my, I don't have my Wacom tablet. It's over there, but I have an old Wacom tablet. I want to get a one where you can actually draw on the screen, but I have one of the old ones where it's like over here and I'm drawing, looking at the screen over there and just testing it out, learning different ways to animate. There's a segment in the way that the ink is drawn where you can add weight to it and it adjusts. So it fluctuates and it looks like it's kind of like handwritten like those uh, Squiggle Vision cartoons by Dr. Katz. And to go from one segment to the other, I thought, what better way to do it than just to make the lines crinkle themselves up and then form again into a new word. So that's basically what I did. And I would take certain words that were said or lines that were said throughout the interview. 
that was how I did it. And I exported that as a clip and I'm getting a little more familiar with Blender and I'd like to see these get a little bit more advanced as I go along. While I had success with Blender yesterday, which was a cool thing to figure out, or somewhat success, I'm getting farther. Um, I had my weekly, so normally we would go to band practice, but because everybody's in quarantine right now, we're doing band practice online and I'm trying to find a way for us to track songs uh, with the software that we use. We use Ardour, which is uh, free and open source multi-track recording software. And I've been helping the guys hook up and they were all set. So they showed up and their stuff was working. They had like MIDI instruments hooked up. Even my drummer had his electronic drum kit hooked up, which he's the one that's been having the hardest time. And he showed up and his stuff sounded great. And it was going right through the sound card. Everything was perfect. So I'm like, I'm gonna hook up my crappy little MIDI keyboard that I use to trigger the MIDI channel on my multi recorder. Nothing, couldn't get it to connect. Super frustrating and I still haven't figured it out. So it's still sitting here from when I was doing it yesterday. I just got fed up with it and walked away. But I don't know why all of a sudden I'm the one that's having the connection problems. So I gotta put this away or I'm gonna try and fix it a little later. I gotta post some stuff first, but that really bummed me out. So it's a USB MIDI connecting into that thing right there. And normally the computer would read it, but it was, it would see it and it would be like, well, I don't understand what you want me to do. That's the response it would give me. The computer would say that to it. Oh, sorry. Computer's also what our Alexa is called. So whenever I say it a lot, it thinks that I'm talking. 